Welcome back to our object oriented programming tutorials in Python, our deepest dungeon adventure game. So we're now going to stage two. So stage one, remember we actually created our three rooms, we linked those three rooms together. At the moment, that's pretty kind of boring because we're just showing these are my three rooms, these are my descriptions. It's not interactive in any way. So what we're going to do in stage two is we are going to move between the rooms and we're going to what's called uh, create what's called the main loop. This is really important um, in event-driven programming. You have a main loop which just continuously keeps going and listening out for events to happen. Um, so let's have a look at how we're going to do those things here. So stage two, the steps are going to be this. We're going to create the move method. So you can see on our object orientated, no, sorry, our UML over here, the universal modeling language, we have now got the same as last time. We still got our three same attributes. We have an additional function, uh, additional uh, method down here. And this is the move. Now this is a bit different to the other ones in that it move it accepts a, um, um, an argument, which is direction, but then it returns a value. What it returns is one of the rooms and says, this is where we've moved to. So let's have a look. We're going to do that. We're going to initialize the starting room. Uh, we're going to create the main loop. And in the main loop, it's going to describe the cart room. It's going to accept a user input. And it's going to respond to the user command. So going back into Thonny, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our rooms. This is a room um, file that we had there and we're going to make that new method so that's other function here so what do we call it we called it move because we want to move to another room so remember this is a method so it's a function within um, a class so we need to always pass self as our first argument the other argument that we actually had um, going back and looking at our plan the other argument it gets passed is direction so what direction are we going to move in? So the direction, it gets passed. And then we're going to describe what this function does. This returns the room linked um, in the given direction. Okay, so we're going to turn that room. No worries. So what we need to do first off is we get the direction. We need to see if there actually is a room in that direction. So remember so north south east west is what we're talking about here so if direction in self dot linked rooms i'll just type this out and I'll explain to you a second what that means right here so here this is saying check all in this linked rooms which is a dictionary have a look at all the keys so this returns all the values of all the, a list of all the keys so we're saying if the direction is in that list of keys, so if it's got, um, for example, the armory, which has a north and an east, if it's either north or east, then you will say, okay, there's a room there, we need to move to that room. So how do we do that is we say, well, we're going to return to the main program, which the program that calls this, whatever value is in that direction, whatever room is. So self.linked rooms, and then I'm going to say, say whatever room is in the direction that I was given. Okay, so close that there. So if direction, so this is direction, if the direction is a key, then I want you to say, return to me whatever room is connected to that key. So come down here and then I need to say, well, if it's not, if it's something else, if it's in the case of armory, if it's to the west or to the south, there's nothing there. Or if they say dog or something else really silly, then we say um, the message, you can't go that way. Right, you can see here what it's doing is just capturing all the possible answers, the actual um, possible options is and it just returns because we still have to return what room it is well it hasn't changed room so you just return self so whatever room this is if we're in the armory and it says check and see if there's something move to the room that's to the south this is well there is no room in the south so you're still in the armory because that's the self that refers to that instance of the um, object so of, of the the class rooms so that's the change you need to make in room. So I'm going to save that here and go across to main. So the other things you want to do, so go back to our plan. I've created the move method. Now I need to initialize the starting room. So this is starting to get your main program a little bit sorted out and ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is come back to main here 
And um, I'm not going to worry about describing the rooms. We don't need to see that. So I'm actually going to, I'm going to leave it in here just so it's there if I ever need it again. But I'm just going to comment it out. Radio. And then, and then once I've commented this out, I'm going to say, well, what room are we going to start in? So I'm going to make a variable called current, current room. Right? And that's saying this is what the current room is. And I'm going to assign it to one of the rooms we had before. I'm just going to say cabin because that's our, our first one we did. So the current room is cabin. Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to now make our main loop. So I'm just going to say this part here is a... Uh, initializing our variables. So in here, I now have my main loop and I like making it really obvious that this is my main loop. Um, so that stands out. So in the main loop, we want this to just run continuously until the game finishes. So we need to say while something. Uh, I can say while true, but then I can't, it'll always keep running, I don't need to be able to change it. So I'm going to make another variable up here, which is just going to keep a tag of where we're at. And this variable is going to be called running. Radio. And running is true. So then I can come down here, and it's quite a logical kind of statement, because it's a interesting way of naming your variable. So while running, so while the program's running, which is currently true, I want it to do this. The first thing it's going to do is going to say, um, okay, current room dot, and I'm going to call the describe of it. Radio, and that way it's going to say, hey, this is the details of the current room that you're in. Yep, that kind of makes sense. So, and then I'm going to ask for a um, input from the user. And I'm just going to, like, in the text-based tradition, you just have a really simple print um, prompt down the bottom there asking them to put information in. And whatever they send to me, I'm going to convert it to logo, lower, and I'm going to store whatever value they have here in command. Now I won't do anything at the moment, I'm just going to run it, and it's just going to show you how that actually will work. So if I go enter here, you're in the cavern, a room so big that the light of your torch doesn't reach the walls, to the south is the armory. And if I press enter, it just loops back around again and says this again. And because that's the only option I have, which is pressing enter, it just will keep showing me that until I finish it, which I'm just going to go stop up there to make it happen. So what we need to do now is actually respond to those commands. So this is getting an event, this is called an event handler. It's getting an event, someone's typed something into the keyboard, right, it's typed it in um, and press enter. So I've now got a value and now I've got to deal with that value. So I can say if command, whatever they entered in, if it's in, now I have a list of possible directions that I know I'm going to have. So north, south, east, west. Now I can only put the lowercase in, and I know it only has to be lowercase because I've converted whatever they've entered in. They can put, you know, little lowercase n, capital O, it doesn't matter because it's all been converted across to lower. So if it's in that, if it's one of those four directions that we're talking about, moving, then I can call the move command. I'm going to say, well, the current, I'm going to call the current room, which is currently the room I'm in, and then I'm going to call the move method on it. And the where direction I'm going to move is whatever the command is. All right, so we go back over, look at our room, and it says, right, I'm now going to move in the direction, if I'm in the cavern, to the south, so if direction is in linked room keys, which south is, because south is one of the linked rooms, then it's going to return the value of armory, because armory is one that's linked south. But I need to return, this value gets returned back to the main program. I need to do something with it. So what I need to do is I need to change the current room to become whatever room gets returned. Right. So remember, if it's south, if there is something there, it will return the new room. If it's not something, if it's if there's no room to the south of the current room, it will just return the current room. So it won't change. So then what else am I going to do? Well, I can keep doing that forever and it's going to get really, really boring. But let's try, if I just try that, let's just go, let's see what happens. Let's go run. And I can say to the south is the armory. So if I say south... Oh, gave me an error. What's the error? 
self if direction in self dot linked rooms dot key has no attribute key. What have I done? So it says, okay, let's just have to trace this back. So the attribute is in line of um, room. So this is the first line that calls it. Line 39 calls this command, which is move. So then in move, in room, so I'm gonna say to move, I'm gonna say linked rooms dot keys. And that's why, because it should be keys, not key. So I missed a typo there. But just using the trace back, it tells me it's line 24 of the room, the room file. Okay, so it's a little bit trickier when you're doing multiple files here to trace them back. But that gives me a trace back. I'll save that and let's try running that again. So run again, right to the south. I want to go to the south. Hey, look there, I'm in the armory. Awesome. So what if I wanted to go in the armory? Remember, there's nothing, there's the labs to the east, nothing to the west. So let's see if I say west, what happens? Radio, you're in the armory, the walls aligned to the rack, once held the weapon in the armory. So, oh, it, it's, I'm still in the armory, I haven't moved, okay. What happens if I just type dog? Radio, it leaves me in the armory. Oh, that's not really useful. Dear, okay, so what else do we have? Um, how am I gonna get out of here? So that's not gonna really provide me with my information. So let's see. Um, so when I said, yeah, go west, it said you can't go that way, and just says where I'm here again. That's good. That's done everything I wanted to do, but I'm still stuck in here. I can't get out of it. So let's 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 leave the opportunity to actually get out of here. So the first if statement says if the command is a direction, move in that direction. I know, now I want to check. Well, if it's not the direction if it's something else so else but i still want to test it if else if command equals quit so we can use the quit command radio and then i can simply say running um, equals false because remember running is our variable that we test each time this loop comes here so if i press play right to the south is the arm if i just type quit it quits it exits out Awesome. Okay, so the next thing I want to do as well is when I type dog in before, it just basically redescribed the room. That's not really helpful for me. So if if it doesn't fit in other directions or if it doesn't fit in the else, what I want to do, if it doesn't fit in one of our commands, I just want a catch all at the end, which is else. So everything else, we're just simply going to say print. Um, I don't understand. So they know that the user knows that um, they've typed something that the computer just doesn't make sense of. So let's try that again. Run that. You know, the room to the south is the armory. I can say dog, and it says, I don't understand. You're in the cavern, room, etc. So I can say south. Right, the walls, armory, etc. Yep, cool. That's no worries. So if I then say, if I want to go to the lab, which is to the east, radio, you're in the laboratory. If I try to go east again, it's gonna say, you can't go that way, and just says again, you're in the laboratory. So, okay, so we've done everything. We are now moving around, and I can move back from the laboratory. If I move back to the west, I should go back to the armory, yep. And if I go back up to the north, um, I should say I am back in the cavern. So that means I've got them all, I've moved around all of them. So we have, if I can just check our little to-dos here, we have, Created the main loop, we describe the current room, access user inputs, and response to the user's command. So that's it, we've gone through all the things we've done. We've finished our stage two. So this little task for you to complete before stage three is what I want you to do is to copy and complete the task below to test each possible option and record the results. This is the example. So for the cavern room, this is a way of testing and you need to do this at an important part and keep a record of it so we've got evidence that you've actually done your testing. So cavern, I put the value in of north. And it should say, I can't go that way. And what do I get? Well, I can't go the way. So you fill this out. So the cavern, possible clients are north, east, south, and west. Radio. And each one of these should say, um, north, east, and west should be, you can't get the way. South says you're in the armory, dot, 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 dot. What's the actual result? You can't go that way. You can't go the way. You're in the armory. And this one was in the armory. This is just an example of if it didn't work. And so it said, oh, no, there's no, it's not correct. So there's something I need to do to fix that up. So go through and make sure for each of your rooms, and you guys should have four rooms, each of your rooms, you check every single direction. So that should be 16 rows, 
for each room, check in all the different directions and say, does it actually give you the response that you want? So that's what we're gonna do for our task for stage two. And that's the end of our stage two of this tutorial series on object-oriented programming in Python.